What's good? What's good, everyone? Welcome back to the show, man. Recap with Mo. Well, we're getting ready to get into another episode breakdown of Tyler Perry's sisters, all right? But before we get into this thing, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss this and that this going down. So the episode that we're getting ready to get into is season six, episode number 13, titled Truth Is. Now, the synopsis for this episode states that Karen is aware of the paternity outcome and the women are there to support her. Q's lies catch up to him as Zach and Fatima make a sad discovery about his son. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this thing. All right, y'all. So we kicked this episode off where we left off with Bio and Sabrina. Now, Bio is like, I know you didn't think I was going to give you that amount of money and not want anything back in return. Sabrina is like, I know this ain't asking me to, to drop it low and spread <laughs> I know this dude cannot be serious, right? So, Bio is going in and he's like, like, did you read it? Did you read the contract? And she was like, I am not doing this. Long story short, he goes back and forth. They go back and forth. And he was like, my nine wives. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And she was like, look, I'm definitely not marrying you. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I believe that this scene right here went on a little bit too long, a lot longer than it needed to. Definitely with the outcome of the conversation where Bio is like, look, all of that shit that I told you earlier, it wasn't true. You know, uh, you, you just have this perceived um, notion about Africans. Like, you just think we're all the same. You think that we have multiple wives. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, but I don't want to marry you. All I want you to do is be at that damn courthouse so I can get my damn money back. That's all I want. Now, it was interesting to me, though, that he's threatening her about her going back to jail. But I was like, did you give her the money for her or did you give her the money for Maurice? And I thought it was the latter. So I was a little bit confused about that because I was thinking like, bro, that <laughs> that argument isn't going to work. Like, first of all, you're not in your country. You are in America. All right. And I just think that you need to just calm the hell down. But anyhow, the way that it, you know, it fizzled out or whatnot, I was like, OK, this scene went on a little bit too long. Definitely. If it wasn't going to be a for real, for real situation. And I'm like, come on, Ty. <laughs> come on, Tyler Perry. Um, anyhow, um, pretty much they both leave the apartment because she conveys to him that she has to go over to her girlfriend's house. Um, going on from there, we head over to. Karen's crib where we see um, both Andy and Danny coming in and Andy is standing outside of the door because she really doesn't want to go in there and face Karen alone because you know what went down over at the law firm she don't want nothing to boom boom all right so anyhow she was like okay I'm gonna just stand out here and wait for everybody to show up then it's like you scared as hell <laughs> <laughs> you scared as hell. She was like, no, no, I'm just, I'm good. I'm just trying to make sure everybody's good. No, you scared as hell. You don't want no situations to go down at this apartment. So anyhow, um, Danny is there in while Sabrina, they drinking up from some bottles that um, Danny has stolen from her workplace or whatnot. So while they're drinking it up, Karen opens the door and she was like, since y'all want to sit out here and talk about me pretty much, y'all might as well come on in here and have a conversation. They was like, oh, no, it ain't nothing like that. No, it ain't nothing. And look, man, y'all been together since college days. Y'all know pretty much what's going down, how people talk about people. Like, it is what it is. Just own up to it, walk y'all ass on in the apartment or whatnot. So anyhow, when they get in, they're like, hey, we just wanted to come over here and check on you, see how you were feeling. And Karen is like, okay, so what else y'all want to talk about? And then it's like, look, you already know Andy told us to scoop everything that done went down at the law firm. Like, Karen is like, <laughs> Karen is like, okay, for real. Yeah, you knew Andy was going to spill the beans. Come on with it. So anyhow, oh, I forgot to say this. When they were outside of the apartment, that's when Andy went into detail about what went down at the law firm. Um, talking about how Aaron 
uh, was able to get his hands on some information about, you know, the baby who's the father. And he conveyed to Andy that he was the baby's daddy. And, you know, they was like, for real? So what is she doing? So that's when Karen opened the door. So I forgot to mention that. Um, she tells them that, you know, she's just dealing with a whole lot of things. She called her doctor and she said she's actually going over there tomorrow to see what's going on with her body. But initially, she was actually trying to blame the baby and the hormones. And Danny called her, and, you know, she called her out on that. And she was like, so you really going to blame the baby? And Sabrina and Andy are like, no, 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 not right now. Danny's like, hell to the no. Like, we're not going to sit up here and act like it's just a baby. And, you know, then Karen goes in and she says, like, it, it could be a number of things. You know, the baby is stressed or Zach and and y'all know how he played me and all that shit. And of course they like, huh? Like <laughs> And I see why the title is called Truth Is because when she said that right there, it it honestly made me think about that song. What's that song from Fantasia? And it goes something like, um, darn forgive my voice a little hoarse, but it's like, I never should have let you go. And it's killing me because I know. When it's all said and done, guess I'm still in love with you. Something like that. And it made me think about that song word for word. Like in the next verse, it says, we reminisce on the way things used to be. Shared a couple of laughs and some memories. Talked about the things that changed, some for good and some for bad. Then he said goodbye and he paid for lunch. Promised that we'll always keep in touch. Grab my bags and grab my thoughts and walked away. And that was that. I was like, shit, man, Fantasia? You <laughs> like I said, man, word for word. So anyhow, the girls were like, for real? Like, you gonna blame Zach? Like, first of all, Zach done moved on. And Danny is like, look, let me go ahead and put this out here. They were like, no, Danny, calm down. Danny's like, F that. Like, Y'all got me over here, away from my crib, and, and y'all gonna sit up here and fake the funk. Right now, what she needs to hear is the realness that's coming from my mouth right now. And the truth is, right now, Karen, you are delusional to believe that Zach is coming back to you. That's really what she's trying to tell her friend, a friend that she loves. Karen is like, okay, okay. I'm, and you can see from her from her body language that she has to accept it. But she really doesn't want to. But I'm glad that Danny is being a voice of reason right now, even though these other friends to the side ain't trying to do that. Sometimes you have to tell people what it is. Because even after Danny says what she says, Karen is still in her mind talking about, y'all saw how he came in me at the salon, how he was all hugged up and telling me that he loves me, he loved me, and then he gave me this money. And they was like, that was to rebuild your salon. Like, there was nothing else to it. Like, he said what he was going to do. He was being a man of his word. And he said that's what he was going to do. So he did it. No, he gave me this because he knows this his baby. Where do you get this? <laughs> Where do you get this from, Karen? Um, Anyhow, man, listen. <laughs> man, let's move on. Um... So after Karen says all that she says, Danny says all that she says, Andy is like, okay, Karen, are you sure that Zach is the father? And Karen is like, huh? And Andy tells her that Aaron believes that he's the father. Karen is like, well, why would he believe that? Well, well she was like, look, he was able to find out some information. And of course, Karen is like, well, who in the hell gave him this information? And Andy is like, I'm quite sure that that's going to be the, the problem. Because if they did tell this information, then they could get into a lot of trouble, of course, with HIPAA laws and all of that stuff. So Karen says boldly with her chest that Zach is the father that she knows it. And Andy is like, well, his DNA information is not on the sheet, on the document. And she was like, right, because I didn't have his DNA. So, of course, if Andy is not the father, then, of course, it has to be process of elimination. It has to be Zach. Andy is like, well, are you sure you didn't get down with somebody else? <laughs> and Karen is like, okay, Andy, I'm offended now. Now, let's be honest, Karen. Now, you did sleep with two guys at the same time, so it's not too hard 
for us to imagine you possibly being with an additional guy. Um, but, you know, she says that she didn't. So all we can do is take her word for it. Um, but Karen is like, look, I'm going to call Aaron and let him know what's going down. And I'll talk to him later on tonight. So anyhow, then it goes on to tell the girls that Andy is actually on the dating app. And we find out a little bit about Danny's, you know, app experience as well, because obviously she's on there with this fake ass profile, you know, picking up men or whatnot. But we've never seen her with any of these men. So, you know, it is what it is. So anyhow, um, Danny tells them also that she and Preston are actually in a relationship. And they was like, for real? Did you just say Preston? She was like, yeah, we're going to try this thing out. He's been there for me, so I'm going to actually give it a shot. But instead of going back home to her man, she's going to hang out with Andy and Sabrina instead. So I'm like, if you're going to give it a shot, take your ass home and be with your man. But obviously, you ain't there yet. So anyhow, um, Karen is like, yeah, y'all go ahead and leave, go do, you know, go have fun or whatnot. And I'm going to go ahead and call Aaron. So when they leave, um, she calls Aaron up. Of course, he's down for the, you know, the ride to come on over to talk to Karen, which he always is. So anyhow, going on from there, we head over to the police station where we see Logan is standing there patiently waiting on Q to show up. So when Q gets there, Logan is like, where your ass been? He was like, look, man, I'm, I'm, I'm hurt. I'm injured. All of this shit like that. I've been shot. So Logan is like, man, get your ass in this room. So when he walks in this room, the DA is actually standing behind the table. He asks Q, do you remember me? And um, Q is like, yeah, you the one that offered me the deal or whatnot. And he was like, yeah, well, that deal is no longer available. Q is like, hold on. What are you talking about? Like, I've already signed it. And he was like, well, shit, I haven't signed it, though. You see what I'm saying? And he said, unfortunately for you, since your ass been lying this whole time on two innocent people, you know, the people that you were in this, you know, this situation with, they've already taken their plea deals. They've already told everything that we needed them to tell. So you know how it works in the legal system. The first ones to squeal are the first ones to get the deal. So unfortunately for Q, I hope they lock his ass up for a long time, just like they said, as I stated in one of my videos previously, like he needs to be one of the folks that go off of the show because it was it, it was terrible to watch this man just... You know, even though Maurice was part of the problem, bringing this man into his situation, you know, but Maurice still did not deserve what Q was doing to him, right? So as they're um, escorting Q out, the police officer says, you know, the DA tells Logan, like, I'm saving your ass right now because if I would have prosecuted two innocent people just so your ass can get a promotion, and truthfully, that's honestly what it felt like. Like he was going all in to place this crime on Sabrina, mostly, and Maurice off of a word, uh, off of the word of a criminal. Like, I'm quite sure that Q has a long ass rap sheet and you, Logan, are willing to risk your career all because of a liar. Man, get the hell up out of here, man. But anyhow, I'm glad that the DA was able to see you through all of this and tell this man that you owe them an apology. And this man is too hard up where he can't even apologize to people. Like, you're not going to last long in this industry that you're in doing the things that you're doing right now because what goes around comes around, bro. So anyhow, going on from there, we see um, Zach and Fatima there on the road traveling to go see what's going on with Zach's son. Because in the previous episode, he couldn't eat anything. He was thinking about his son not having food to eat. So, you know, they both decide to go over and check in on his son. So while they're traveling on the road, she goes in um, to tell him a little bit of what she's been doing, you know, behind the scenes, dealing with Hayden, where she had hooked him up with the woman. And um, he was like, well, that's not too bad. Well, she was like, well... It went a little bit too far because the girl that I hooked him up with, Tamara, he ended up marrying her after two weeks. Zach is like, damn, <laughs> for real? And she was like, look, it's Hayden that we're talking about. So he was like, okay, well, that's understandable. But anyhow, she was like, I didn't want it to go that far. But, you know, Zach is like, it is what it is. Like, it's up to him to make that decision to marry her or not. So anyhow, going on from there, we head over to the restaurant where we see Andy, Sabrina, and Danny 
um, showing up to this restaurant for Andy's blind date. Now, um, Sabrina and Danny, they're just there for support, just to make sure everything is good. Nothing goes sideways, you know, for Andy. So Andy goes over and she sees this dude. He just so happened to play in the pro league or whatnot. So he's an athlete. Obviously, he has some money. So, of course, that's something that attracted Andy to him. So when she goes over to the table, he introduces himself. And then he says, like, you know, I want a hug. So, of course, they hug and embrace one another. And then they sit down. He offers her a drink. He conveys to her, though, that, you know, he really didn't want to come because he had a bad experience previously. And he's just looking at her, how beautiful she is and that she actually looks like her picture. But the previous time that he had met this individual, obviously, that wasn't the case. So he was like, I'm just glad that you you are who you say you were. So anyhow, um, she was like, well, this is actually my first time on the dating app and actually going out on a date from the dating app. And he was like, okay, well, you know, we're going to make it do what it do. So anyhow, they have drinks and they start to talk. Oh, he also says that he really didn't want to come, but his boy made him do it. So already in my head, I'm trying to I'm trying to think about who potentially can be his boy, right? And it just so happens to be Tony because Tony is the guy that you know knew everything about Danny that works at the airport. And well, since we're already talking about it, let's go ahead and get into it. So Tony had you know invited Danny to come out to meet him at this restaurant, all right? And you know when he saw her at the bar, she and Sabrina. He thought that, you know, Danny has showed up to be there with him. And she tells him, like, unfortunately, I'm not here for you. I'm actually here for my friend. And he was like, yeah, I, I, you want me to really believe that? Because at this point, he's thinking that she's playing games. But anyhow, he introduces himself to Sabrina. And he was like, it, it's almost like I know everything about you already. And she was like, well, he listens to my conversations and whatnot. So, of course, Sabrina's like, for real, like, you're going to have to tell me about old boy later, right? So, anyhow, Tony is still insisting that, you know, Danny is there for him. And they're like, no, we're actually here for our friend who's actually on a date right now with a guy over there. And he was like, oh, oh, oh she in good hands. That's my boy, you know, my boy Jordan and whatnot. And they was like, oh, that's your boy. And he was like, yeah, we, we went to school together. Woo, woo, woo. And my friend and I, we had to pretty much drag his ass out of the crib so he can go on this date because he had such a bad experience previously. So right now, everything is aligning correctly unless they don't went home and put this, you know, this whole little situation together. All right. So anyhow, um. He um he he tells them about his friend. His friend actually shows up and he introduces himself. So obviously right now you got two and two. So go ahead and do what it do. You see. <laughs> so anyhow, the girls are like, yeah, you know, with Rich and Tony, yeah, we'll go ahead and go over there. But um, we got to be close to our friends so we can keep an eye out on her. And they was like, OK, that's cool. So anyhow, going on from there. We head back over to Karen's house. Now, when we get to Karen's house, she's sitting down in a chair and she hears a knock on the door. And, of course, it's Aaron. So, Aaron comes over and I'm going to keep this real quick because I'm going to make another side video on this situation right here. Because it was just so much in this, this scene right here that I really want to dive into. Shit, it might be two videos because there was a whole lot of meat on this bone that we can get into for real, for real. But anyhow, you know, Aaron um, offers to give her the money for a salon. She was like, look, I really appreciate everything that you've done. He was like, yeah, you'll be able to open up pretty soon. So anyhow, going on from there, Karen is like, look, I just want you to know that I cannot do this. And I really want to step away from this situation. Of course, Aaron is like, what in the hell are you talking about? So it's like, look, I just can't do this anymore. It's just going to be me and this baby. Of course, he's like, look, I'm going to be here for the baby regardless. And that's going to be a hard thing for you to do. Definitely since, you know, and she was like, what are you saying? He was like, well, I'm the father. She was like, now, where did you get that from? We'll talk about that later. So anyhow, long story short, she gives him the document to look at. And he says, yeah, see, it says 99%. Now, um, 
I'm quite puzzled here because I'm trying to understand that. Let me say it like this. I'm quite sure that Aaron is a smart guy. And I'm just trying to understand how is it that he never thought to read the whole document? That seemed odd to me that he just stopped at 99%, like 99%, 99.9% what? Like 99% no, 99.9% yes. Like, why would you just stop there? That that seemed odd to me. But anyhow, um, Karen is like, look, you're not the father. She taps his hand, take the document away. <laughs> <laughs> takes the document away from old boy. And so like, look, I don't want to be on this train no more. He was like, well, what if I don't want to get off this train? And I'm like, yeah, Karen, what if you don't want to get off the train? And, you know, she's done. She's, she's mentally out of it. And Aaron just has to accept it. I know he doesn't want to let her go, but he's going to have to let her go at this point in time. Maybe there'll be another time that he'll be able to get himself back into the fold. But right now, just be respectful. Leave so you don't have any issues that come along with that. And then Karen pretty much tells him, like, look, you don't have to call me. You don't have to do nothing. I can take care of myself. And I'm going to take care of this baby, me, myself, and I. And I'm like, hold on, what about Zach? See, this, look, I said I wasn't going to get into it, but it was so much, man. But anyhow, but anyhow, she walks to the door. After saying that she can do this by her damn self, she walks to the door to let this brother out, leaves him at the table, and it's like, Aaron? And he gets up, and of course the music changes and the scene changes, and he's try he embraces her. You can tell that she doesn't want to let him go. He doesn't want to let her go, but she has to do what's best for her and the baby that we don't see, right? So Aaron, Aaron is like, look, I told you I would take care of this child regardless of the fact. Just let me know. Just let me know. Look. Look, I just want to be in your life. And she was like, look, I just can't do it. He tries to kiss her, holding her on her chin and shit. And she was like, Aaron, Aaron, I need your ass to leave. <laughs> I need you to leave right now because you're making this hard for me. So anyhow, let's get to the meat of this thing, right? So next we see Zach and Fatima. Now, Zach and Fatima are outside of this apartment complex. Now, y'all y'all have driven all the way over here to stand outside. Like, y'all trying to decide what y'all going to do. Like, what, what are we doing here, right? So, you know, they're standing outside, and this woman, I guess she's one of the neighbors, she comes up, and she was like, um, yeah, you know, what's going on? Like, And she tells them everything that's going down about Heather and how many men she got running in and out, because Zach is like, is it the same guy? And old girl is like, oh, no, and, and she got so many dudes running in and out, and that's just not a great environment to raise a child in. So, Anyhow, while she's standing there talking, she's like, well, who are you? So she points at Fatima, and Zach answers for her by saying, she's my wife. Hold on, wait a minute, did I miss something? Like, I haven't seen the wedding. Like, I'm just like, okay, she's my fiance, but now she's my wife. And old girl pretty much puts it out there like, okay, how can you deal with this shit? And I'm right there with her. Like, how can you deal with this? Like, I could not be in this situation when you got a, a woman that's not taking care of her child and you got this crazy ass baby mama right here. And now you're trying to piece all of this together. Um, we'll talk about it in another video because I got a whole lot of stuff to talk about with this one. So anyhow, um, while they're standing there talking, they hear a loud scream coming from the apartment complex. And she was like, there you go. He up there doing that thing again. So anyhow, Zach rushes out there to um, the apartment complex. Fatima's following close behind. He walks up to the door knocks on the door. Another guy opens the door. I thought it was the dark skin guy. No, it's another dude this time. So I was like, what the hell is going on? So anyhow, he was like, look, man, 
do you live here? He was like, look, why do you want to know? He was like, do you live here? He was like, look, man, you need to go on about your business. So anyhow, Fatima was like, look, let's just go call the police. He was like, listen to your fine-ass baby. Listen to your fine-ass girl. That's pretty much what he was saying, trying to get up on the Zach skin and whatnot. So anyhow, Zach was getting ready to jettison, and he heard the screams once again. So I'm assuming old boy went back in there and continued what he was doing before. And Zach comes in and knocks the door in. He goes at it, knocking dude from left to right, left to right, left to right, boom, boom. And I was like, here we go. Fatima was like, stop it, stop it. Now, you already know the rage is there. This is his son. He feels some type of way about not being there for his son. So he's going to do what he needs to do to protect his son, Fatima. It is what it is. And we have reached the end of the episode. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this review and recap, man. Um, like I said, y'all got some videos coming your way because there is a lot of stuff that we got to get into the conversation about. So as always, please like and subscribe to this channel if you have yet to do so. Also, leave some comments down below. Let's get into the conversation. Until next time, peace.